that the carbon dioxide which is present in the gaseous system at room temperature and atmospheric pressure can exist in the liquid state also but beyond a certain temperature that is 31 degrees Celsius you cannot have liquid carbon dioxide at all. Let us find out why. Hello, myself Dr. Upasana Isar and we will be covering the critical state of matter or critical phenomena in this lecture and we will study Andrew's isotherm for carbon dioxide. We will also derive the relation between critical constants and van der Waals constants for a particular gas. To know more about this topic, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link of which is given in the description box. What is a critical phenomena? A critical phenomena is a state where the gaseous system can be liquefied but beyond that particular temperature the liquefaction cannot take place. So critical temperature is the temperature beyond which the gas cannot be liquefied howsoever high the pressure may be. Uh, similarly, when we say that the pressure at which this occurs uh, we say that it is a critical pressure and the volume occupied by the gas at critical state is called critical volume. Uh, why we are saying it as critical? Because this is a last point by at which the system can exist in certain form. So in the liquid form, if I am saying for liquefaction of gases, it is the last point at which the liquid state of the matter will be existing and beyond that the liquid state will not exist. So how it is happening and uh, what are the experimental findings behind this, let us study that. So as I said, the critical constants for a gas, see if I have a gas at normal temperature and uh, at STP or NTP, standard temperature pressure or normal temperature pressure, this means that you have a state of the gas where the pressure is let's say 1 atm pressure and your temperature is let's say 298 Kelvin and if I have a 1 mole of gaseous species, it will occupy 22.4 liters of the volume. But if I change these parameters, then there will be changes happening in the gaseous system. So if I increase the pressure, what will happen? You will see, you will, you know, think that the liquefaction will take place. But every time it is not possible, there has to have a temperature below which only the liquid state will exist if you moderate the pressure above which it will not exist. So it is the critical temperature which is of utmost importance and it says that the temperature above which the gas cannot be liquefied even if you apply thousands of atmosphere of pressure. And the pressure at which this is happening, it is a minimum pressure required to liquefy the gas at critical temperature is critical pressure and the volume occupied by the system is the critical volume. These are its representation TC, PC and VC. The experiment was performed in this particular chamber where we have initially taken a liquid state and A was vacuum only, there was no air uh, vapors, okay. And this is a manometer in which mercury is filled. This is the water bath where hot water, this is the inlet and this is the outlet of the water bath and this is a thermometer. So in this particular experiment, what was performed, what was done is the temperature of the system was raised by the flowing water and as the temperature of the system increases, the liquid will start going into the vapor state and the vapors will start coming uh, into existence. At one point, because there is no change in the volume, the volume is fixed, what will happen? The boundary between liquid and vapor will disappear and that particular, the pressure at which this will uh, take place is called critical pressure and the temperature at which this will take place is called critical temperature. So this is the experiment 
and the temperature is monitored from here and pressure is monitored by the rise in the mercury whatever was the initial level and then with the final level the difference between the two will tell you the pressure. So, this is how critical pressure and critical temperature can be calculated. Uh, the main thing is what is happening at critical point is the boundary between the two phases is disappearing. You have or in other words the densities of liquid and vapor state become same at critical point. So, Andrews performed this experiment on carbon dioxide gas and he also found similar type of behavior. Uh, he said that the liquefaction of carbon dioxide occurred only below 31.1 degree Celsius which he labeled as critical temperature and the gas behaves almost as perfect above critical temperature because if liquid state is not happening the gas will behave as perfect gas and the density of liquid becomes equal to density of vapor at critical point. So, this is one representation which I have shown that if you take carbon dioxide in a container then uh, it, and on increasing the pressure on increasing the pressure what is happening the liquid state is coming into existence if you increase more and more pressure you will have more of liquid and less of gaseous state and at last you have only the liquid state. So, these are the representation of the various phases that are occurring on changing pressure and the changes are occurring in the volume as well that is represented by Andrew on an isotherm which is called Andrew's isotherm. So, this is a diagrammatic representation of Andrew's isotherm. What do you mean by isotherm first? Isotherm is a graph at constant temperature. Iso means same, therm means temperature, thermal. So, same temperature graph that means it is a variation of pressure and volume at a fixed temperature. So, in this graph you can see various isotherms. This is my isotherm at 48 degree Celsius. This is the isotherm at 35 degree Celsius. What is isotherm? Pressure and volume variation. This is a pressure and volume variation at 48 degree Celsius. So, on observing these isotherms, Andrews uh, uh, monitored that the, the plots are not same there is a variation in the plots right and why it is occurring how it is occurring uh, let us figure out. So, in this isotherm we can see that the isotherm at 31.1 degree Celsius is having a certain break in the cooling or break in the curve. It is not similar to the curve before. Similarly, the isotherm plotted at 21 degree Celsius observes a point where there is a small variation in the pressure with almost large, la large change in the volume and this line horizontal line increases further if you lower down the temperature. These findings suggested how the, how the states of the matter is, is changing. Uh, at 48 degree Celsius you have entire gaseous system entire carbon dioxide gaseous. If I see a graph or isotherm at 21 degree Celsius, we see that at larger volume at lower pressure, the state of the matter is gaseous. At B point, some liquid carbon dioxide will start coming. From B to C, liquid and gaseous state are in equilibrium with one another and there will be a transition of gaseous to liquid form. At point C, it is almost liquid carbon dioxide and at point C, if you further decrease the volume because now liquids are incompressible in comparison to gas, you have a sharp increase in the pressure with small change in the volume. So, same thing is happening if you increase the temperature, but what is happening at 31.1 degree Celsius? This change of liquid to gaseous state, this horizontal line is decreasing, is decreasing, further decreasing and it is coming to a point 
point where now only a single point is there at which liquid state is existing. So we can say that in the Andrews isotherm, we have an entire region where liquid and vapor will coexist together and this critical point is a last point at which liquid and vapor are coexisting. At 31.1 degrees Celsius, horizontal portion vanishes. Above this temperature, gas cannot be liquefied at, so if I am saying at 35.5 and 48 degrees Celsius, the gas cannot be liquefied. These are the findings of Andrews isotherm. So in this part, we have covered the experimental findings of critical constants and how the Andrews experiment was performed on carbon dioxide and what are the results. In the second part, we will cover the relation between critical constants and Van der Waals constants. To know more about this topic, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link of which is given in the description box. If you find this video interesting, please like, share and subscribe this channel. Also press the bell icon for future updates. the permission of the copyright holder.